G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, it's Thursday afternoon here in Australia, so sort of Thursday morning over in the States, and we can see that the cap's pulled back just a little bit. So we're still above 500 billion, which is really good. BTC, so 65.2%, just kind of hanging around that 65% level. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if it got a little bit higher. Uh, according to this, uh, ETH gas prices are at zero. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's quite correct. For some reason, it's not showing. Uh, but, you know, sort of leveled off at the moment and even sort of slightly pulled back. Again, Bitcoin went all the way up to like 18,000, sort of 400 and has pulled back a little bit. That was always going to happen. Now, we do have the weekend coming as well. So traditionally, again, I say this all the time, there's, again, traditionally a weekend pullback. So we could see some lower prices. It's not guaranteed. But it's just a high percentage chance that it's going to happen. Most weekends, uh, there's some kind of pullback. Sometimes they're really, really big ones, and other times they're not. Now, considering the massive sort of run-up that we've had, it is just possible that we have a massive pullback. I don't think that's going to happen, but we just need to keep in mind that that is a possibility. All right, 24 hours. Has there been any gainers? Of course, there's been some gainers. Yearn Finance seems to be doing extremely well. It's really bouncing back. Be interesting to see how high this can go. A lot of people think that it's going to go to uh, sort of 50,000. Uh, some people have even said 100,000. I don't know about that. I think there is only 21,000 of them or something like that. So there you go. Sushi just uh, is on an absolute screamer at the moment. Uh, again, I wouldn't touch it personally, but that doesn't mean there's not uh, any money to be made from it. Uh, just, you know, there were too many issues at the start. That's not to say that it means it's a dead project. Uh, it's just I don't want to put my money into things that I'm obviously too concerned about. A lot of people would say cryptocurrencies, uh, you know, speculative sort of assets anyway, uh, all up. Uh, this would just be a little bit more speculative uh, than I'm willing to risk at the moment. But really, you know, a couple of good gainers and then everything else is, you know, just kind of, you know, single digit gainers. So nothing too crazy. What about losses, though? What do we got some big losers? Ample fourth. Uh, well, uh, it's come right down. I'm pretty sure that's a little bit further down than what it should be. It should be sitting around a dollar if I'm correct. Ban protocols taking a bit of a beating there. Uh, but, you know, again, we can see that it bounced around for a while. Status. And again, generally just sort of single digit losses. So nothing really too bad. Even Ample Force loss, not too bad. Uh, again, I'm pretty sure that's supposed to sit around a dollar, but I, I could be wrong. So pretty stock standard sort of market. Nothing too crazy is happening. Uh, even some of the bigger DeFi players are down a bit. So Ren, uh, Uniswap's down a little bit. Aave, uh, Link is down a bit. Uh, Synthetics Network's down a little bit, but nothing sort of too bad. And look, there's not a whole lot of news going on at the moment, so I don't have too many news stories. We're just going to have a look at some prices. So at the moment, Ethereum versus Bitcoin. All right, so it has been coming down for quite a while, and this is a line that's uh, quite often been support, uh, but it's also been resistance a couple of times. So this only goes back to September 2017, so it's missing about two years' worth of data. Uh, Ethereum came out, I think, in late 2015. But we can see it had its big massive uh, run up in 2017, 2018, uh, and then it's just been, you know, falling against Bitcoin for a long time. Now we got to here, so September 2019, and it has slowly started to gain against Bitcoin. But now we can see uh, it's had a pullback and it's almost tipping this point right here. So it's got very, very close uh, to touching it. We've got to wait and see if that holds. Now, this is just against Bitcoin. So basically, from back here, if it's going up, it means it's gaining on Bitcoin. If it's going down, it's losing against Bitcoin. And if it's going sideways, it's basically doing the same as Bitcoin. So as we can see, uh, ETH has been losing against Bitcoin since, what have we got? 3rd of September. So Bitcoin started to go on a bit of a run and Ethereum hasn't really been able to keep up and follow. But prior to that, I mean, you know, since over here, we can see that uh, Ethereum was really starting to sort of lead the way. So we're waiting to see if this key resistance line is gonna hold. Is Ethereum going to flip? Now this is against Bitcoin. It can be going down against Bitcoin, but still being going, 
still be going up in US dollar value. So it really depends on what you're uh, trying to compare it to. We, you, you can compare it to against the US dollar and you'll know whether it's making money or not. And uh, you can compare it to Bitcoin to see if Bitcoin would have been the better investment, the better place to put your money in. Uh, and really since the 3rd of September, 1st of September thereabouts, Bitcoin would have been the better bet. But we'll just have to wait and see whether it can hold. We can go over to the USD chart. Now, we can see that Ethereum has been following this trajectory for quite some time, since basically right after uh, the pandemic happened, uh, against the US dollar, it's been growing quite steadily. Now, it did come and sort of test here a few times and bounced up, and this was that magic $400 level. So we're still above the $400 level, and we're still holding this line as well. So again, we're just gonna have to wait and see. Is this going to roll over and come back down and test this, or is it going to pump higher? And again, at the moment, Bitcoin's the better bet. That's not to say that it's always going to be the better bet, because if we go back to the chart, again, when you can see it going up, that means it's outperforming Bitcoin. When you can see it coming down, it's not outperforming Bitcoin. And when it's traveling sideways, it's basically on level par with Bitcoin. But at the moment, and since September, uh, it has been falling against uh, Bitcoin. So Bitcoin's the better bet at the moment. We'll just have to wait and see whether that lasts. All right, Litecoin. Let's go, we'll go against the dollar first. All right, so here's Litecoin going against the dollar. We can see it's had a really good run. Since way back here in the 21st of October, it's been doing pretty well against the dollar. So if you're just comparing it to the US dollar, uh, Litecoin's doing quite well. But if we go over here and have a look uh, against BTC, it had that good pump that I, I talked about the other day and it's already started to retrace. And now we're just sort of sitting here, and this is what, 41,412,597 Satoshis. That's where it's at. We're waiting to see whether it's gonna push up. It's caught in a bit of a channel here, and it's starting to get uh, fairly wide and fairly big, but it did break the long-term resistance. So this is the long-term downtrend uh, for Litecoin. It's broke out to the other side, and it's kind of bounced off it a few times. So now we're waiting to see if it's gonna bounce uh, bounce and go outside of this, because now this is more the short-term trend. Uh, it hasn't been able to break this short-term trend. So time will tell. <sighs> Hopefully Litecoin uh, does well. Uh, I'm, I'm hopeful, uh, well, more than hopeful. I, I think it will. I think it's just gonna take uh, a little bit of time particularly once uh, PayPal goes sort of live for outside of the United States and things, and just once other people start to get into it. You know, the people who are buying cryptocurrencies on PayPal right now, they're gonna be the early adopters for the PayPal uh, thing. It, you know, not all of America is getting into it just yet, and I think they really will lead towards Litecoin when they see that it's a whole lot cheaper uh, than trying to buy one whole Bitcoin. It's just the human psyche, and that is what makes me think uh, Litecoin will really start to pump at some stage. Could be wrong, we'll have to wait and see. But again, against the US dollar, you're still making money. It's just against Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the better bet. Uh, and you know, whether that will remain the same until the end of the cycle, who knows? Uh, and again, in the long run, I think Litecoin's here to stay. A lot of, you know, there's people saying, oh, that it won't, it's nothing more than a test net for Bitcoin. And it is kind of a test net for Bitcoin, but it's pretty much the same as Bitcoin. It just, um, it has more coins, so it's got 85 million in total as opposed to 21 million. Uh, only 65 million, nearly 66 million are uh, currently uh, accessible, so there's still another 20 million uh, to be mined. So there's more of them. I think institutions will jump on board and I want to get a good foothold. And again, people will just naturally levitate towards Litecoin once, you know, they're going to go to Bitcoin at first. That's what everyone does. That's, they get their first exposure there and you know they'll see some good gains, but they'll be like, I'm never gonna own one. I wanna own a whole something. And that's when they'll start to look at other coins. And in PayPal, Litecoin is uh, in there and I think it's the cheapest one. Uh, it's cheaper than Bitcoin Cash, although that continues to go down. But that also uh, is a whole nother story about whether Bitcoin Cash uh, really is gonna be around for the long term. And you know maybe Litecoin as well, who knows? But last of all, let's have a look at the big daddy, Bitcoin, who's been leading the way. Now, we have had quite a run, and we can see there's a bit of a pattern happening here. We have a run-up, and then it's just gradual, 
we have a run up and then it's just gradual we have a run up maybe it's just going to be a little bit gradual for a while before we have another run up and again you know we have these kind of things that are you know some you know semi decent retracements and i'm going to say that they're probably happening around about sort of the weekend so this is thursday wednesday tuesday monday sunday saturday friday thursday wednesday tuesday monday sunday saturday friday so you can see there's a bit of a pattern that quite often a lot of these reds will come on a weekend there about sometimes it can happen on the thursday sometimes it can happen on the sunday sometimes it'll even happen early on the monday depending if there was a cme gap that was uh, created on that weekend uh, and there is possibly a CME gap that's going to be, cre be created this weekend maybe, or it'll just follow what it's normally done. Very hard to know. You know, time will tell. I'm not a fortune teller. I don't have the answers for everything. All right, just a quick one from me. Not a whole lot of news going on at the moment. I do uh, think we're going to come up and we're going to at least touch this 20K sort of range uh, before the end of November but it's also possible that we get a heavy rejection just before we get to it. Uh, you know, time will tell. Again, in the long term, anything under 20,000 for me is long term huddle Bitcoin. Uh, I don't plan on selling any of that. But once it starts to go above 20,000, that Bitcoin will most likely be the Bitcoin that I will sell uh, as sort of time goes by. But again, we'll have to wait and see. If Bitcoin for some reason makes it to 150, 200 300 thousand then i'm probably going to think more around any of the bitcoin that i bought under fifty thousand will be my long-term huddle because you know i don't see it going you know if it makes it to three hundred thousand, i don't see it going below fifty thousand at the next cycle low i think there's just too much institutional money in it uh, and again once the retail fomo starts and all the rest of it it won't go that low you know from three hundred thousand down to fifty thousand, that is basically a 90 percent retracement uh, right there I don't think it's going to do that. Could be wrong though. We'll have to wait and see. Let me know your thoughts. If Bitcoin makes it to, let's say, Plan B's stock to flow model, if Bitcoin makes it to 288,000 at the cycle peak, what do you think the cycle low is going to be? Do you think we're going to have another sort of 80 to 90% retracement? Or do you think now that institutional money has got in that the the volatility is going to start to be lower because that's my personal thought. I think the highs will start to get less after this one and the lows will start to get less. It'll basically start to level out. Bitcoin anyway, uh, the altcoins will still be highly volatile, but even they will not be as volatile simply because they're all going to be uh, you know, backed around things like Bitcoin uh, and also Ethereum. All right, stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that game train. And I'll see you next time.